Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode three of The Horse, of course, the official podcast of Society General Valley Rugby Football Club here in Hong Kong. We have rugby, we have hockey, we have netball, and we have academy. We have the fort for youngsters, the mini and the youth rugby players, hockey and netball as well. So thanks for joining us. As promised, we're going to be extending the show and featuring players, members, special people of the club over the off-season, catching up with them, seeing what they do, what brought them to Hong Kong, and what makes them special. We kick things off this week with Aggie Maroney. She's a young Argentinian superstar hockey player with quite a colourful history already. Let's go and talk to her. Thanks for joining us. Okay, welcome to episode three of The Horse, of course, the Society General Galley podcast coming to you live from my bedroom, my home office, I should say, in Tung. And with us, as promised, a proper superstar is Aggie Maroni. Hi, Aggie. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, now, I've got to make sure I'm saying your name correctly first. Aggie Maroni. Yes, Aggie Maroni. Correct. That's That's good. And Maroni, is that, is that Italian? That's Italian, yes. So my grandparents migrated from Italy and, yeah, that's how we're Italians. Yeah, okay. Now, um, for those that don't know Aggie, she's been with the Valley for since about January. She's a, a hockey player. Uh, she's very well traveled. She's played a number of countries. Today, the idea is that we get to know Aggie a little bit better. Um, um, we're, we're privileged to have, have players and characters, characters like Aggie like at the Valley. So, um, um, I want to just start off, off Aggie, it's, it's been a difficult five or six, five or six months, months for you. You arrived in January, January play, hockey, play hockey, you've only played one game. game. Um, <laughs> very <laughs> strange circumstances <laughs> for you. Yes, it has been pretty strange. So, I arrived and the first week was the only normal one. We got a match in and we won, which was important. And then... Nothing the next week, uh, we couldn't play due to protests and stuff. And then it was Chinese New Year's and the pitches started to get closed and nothing. So life has been a bit like slow since then. Uh, a lot of like trying to figure out when to train or who to train with and just try to stay active and fit however we could. So how are you staying fit? What are you doing? Um, I did quite a bit of running and um, hiking and stuff like that. We had like kind of like a bit of a challenge going that we tried to do like the most hikes and islands that we could in the past three months. And we crossed out a lot. So that was really entertaining. And now um, we're using football clubs field to train with um, national teams, which is uh, really good. So we just back to training this last week. So we do like every morning, almost of hockey, which has been really good to just get to play hockey again. Start at the beginning. Uh, you were born in Cordoba in Argentina. Is that how I say it? Yes, Cordoba, Cordoba in Argentina. Yes. Okay, so tell us tell us about Cordoba and what's what's good in Cordoba. <laughs> well, um, we're just like the second biggest province in Argentina, which is something to be proud of. Uh, it's quite like a city kind of thing. Um, I grew up there, like there's really not much going on. We've got a lot of mountains <laughs> and a lot of farms. Um, yeah, just going to school, playing hockey was the only like really fun thing to do apart from like watching soccer or like rugby and stuff like that. And yeah, we're like really, really passionate about sport because there's really like not much going on apart from that. So. Yeah, grew up playing a lot of sport and, um, well, dad has a farm, so I grew up going to the farm quite a lot, um, love animals, um, like you can see in the in the screen, um, grew up going to the farm and, yeah, riding horses and just having all different kinds of pets and animals, so that's pretty much my, yeah, how I grew up. Okay, so... Some pictures of animals here. Tell us, are these are these your pets? Are these farmyard animals? Are these are these? Um, some of them look like they could be dinner. How does it work? Uh, like weird animals that got injured, and we just like got them as pets and like made them recover, so we can like get them to the wild again. We had like a flamingo once um, that got injured, like just traveling through a farm, and we try to get him better, and they just like stick around, so. 
we had a lot a lot of different type of animals so like that's where one of my passions come through like i love animals and i love to like work with them like sometime in the future um so what, what kind of farm was your family running up there so it used to be just cattle and corn and like yeah crops and stuff like that but now it's just mainly crops and uh, we used to have like so many cows and stuff like that and now dad just kind of like retire quite a bit and then we just have crops now and is that a sort of wine part of argentina <laughs> yeah interesting the wine kiwi <laughs> and the no. beef. <laughs> yes and the beef the, the two highlights uh, no no it's really dry it's right in the middle of argentina the wine is really good um on the west side next to the mountains so our land is good for like soybeans that you can see in the photo and like corn and yeah, wheat, but that's mainly the three we like crop. And, and was it big enough that, that you did need a horse to ride around or was that just for fun? No, it was, yes, it's really big. When we had the cows, um, we had to go pick them up with the horses because you will be walking for hours. Like we used to do like daily checks when they baby cows were being born how do you call the baby cows i don't even know in english the Cow, so yeah calving. yeah fair. so when they were like, being born we had to like ride the horses around for like five hours a day and it was the best the best thing about like growing up there i loved it and so um how far did you have to travel to get to school were you really rural you had to get the school bus or no so the farm actually is like two and a half hours away from my home um so while dad was like full time being a farmer he stayed on the farm like five days out of the week and we just lived in the city um and whenever i could like sneak out of school and go with dad to the farm i would um but yeah if not normally i would just go like a weekend um a weekend like on a normal week like a, on a month or if not i would just uh, go during the summer and then uh, just putting a photot up there on screen, I assume this is your, your, is this your dad and your sister? Yes, that's dad and my sister, that's at home. Those are um, my dogs, but the ones I grew up with, yeah, we had like such a big park. And this place we lived wasn't really safe, so we had like five German shepherds like just running around our backyard, just making sure that we were safe. They were like really good guards. Okay, and you're, you've got a sister there, we saw on the photo, you're, you're really close to your sister, is that your only sibling? Yes, yes, she's my only sibling, yeah, she's at the moment living in Australia, um, so it's good because of the time difference, um, it's only two hours, so we like, yeah, speak every day, I'm super close to her. Yeah. And, and you mentioned that you mentioned as a kid in Argentina, um, most kids are playing lots of sport. So I, I, you know, football's obviously the big one that everybody knows about, but how far down the sort of order is hockey in terms of sport popularity? So for women's hockey is the most popular sport. I reckon that every kid at least played once in their lives. Like, schools play hockey and football like those are the two like mandatory sports um so it's massive in argentina like everybody knows the national team and it's it's just yeah massive sport in argentina i see well i see argentina are ranked second in the world at the moment on the women's rankings the men are ranked fifth in the world that's i didn't know that until i was googling <laughs> yes, yes so you, you picked up a hockey stick at what age were you when you first Picked up Maybe six, yeah, five or six, just because yeah. my sister started in school and I just wanted to do everything she was doing. So I just started playing with her, like she started teaching me a bit. And then you know, I started like really liking the sport, but at the same time I was playing like a couple more. And then my parents were like, okay, you kind of like need to decide. And when I was like 10, I joined my club and just played hockey like for the past 13 years. Like that's all I've done. Yeah, and you felt like out of all those sports, hockey was the right one for you and your, your parents sort of nudged you in the right direction. Yes, correct. My best friend at the time was playing hockey at the club that I joined and I was like, oh, yeah, it's so fun. I'm going to play with her. And like, I was like really good at school. 
And I was like, oh, I'm just going to like crush it at the club, whatever. And then when I joined the club, these kids have been playing like for club for like five years or so. So I had to start from like the very bottom, like climb up because I was so bad then. So yeah, it's, I come a long way. <laughs> Yeah. And then when you get to secondary school, um, the, the kids mainly still play at clubs or do the schools, are the schools strong? Yes. The people that like really wants to play, they go to clubs because the school system is not really competitive. Like, I don't know, you've got like countries like the US or like the UK where the, the inter-school competition is massive. But uh, in Argentina, no, if you don't play in a club, you kind of like don't have any competition. Mm. And, and as you sort of came into your teenage years, um, did you have a vision for being a world famous hockey player, winning the World Cup or the Olympic gold or something like that? What were your hockey dreams when you were sort of teenage years? Yeah, so when I was a teenager, that's when it started to get like really competitive. So we started doing like national like trainings and stuff like that. Um, but my my real goal with hockey was to be able to like travel the world more than anything. So when I got the offer about going to the States and get the scholarship and like be able to travel with the sport, I like thought that that was like more important for me. Um, so nothing, I just, as soon as I got that offer, I was like, I'm out of Argentina. Like my mom has always encouraged us to like go travel the world, like tell us that there's so much better stuff out there. And yeah, she's right. So. I'm yeah. I'm super happy with the decision about like leaving Argentina. Um, it has been a good ride. And sort of at that point, you I think you were 17. You told me when you took up that scholarship. Were you, were you playing representative hockey at that stage, or what level have you got up? To? No, I was only doing state level. We were starting to like train for like under 18s and like under 21s, like with the national stuff. But I was like almost like I will have to have moved to the next level so like basically people in argentina you have to move to buenos aires and train there to be able to get into the national process so i was like between like moving to buenos aires or moving to the us and i was like well i think it's a bit of like an easy option for me i'm just going to the us so yeah is, is there also in Argentina, like, uh, you know, like most countries, the big city, people don't often appreciate people from the big city, like in New Zealand, it's Auckland and London and the UK. Is, is there a negative sort of thing from people outside of BA? Yes, yes, that's the thing. Like, you go to, like, national tournaments and, like, we always get to the final and we get smashed by Buenos Aires, like, next level. So they're, like... Who are these kids coming like from the province? Like who do they think they are? Kind of attitude. So like that's why in Argentina nobody likes people from Buenos Aires because they got that attitude. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, the US was an easy choice. Yes. Um, oh, fully. Yes. That's really young to leave home. I mean, it must have been quite tough in the early days. Where about in the US did you um, base yourself? So I went to Virginia. Um, the university I went to, it's called Liberty. And yeah, it was like, it was tough, but I think like I was mentally ready to move on. Like I've lived in Argentina for 17 years and I was like, just ready to move on. And I always had the support of my parents that like, if I needed anything, like I've always obviously can come back. And like my sister will phone me every day and like keep up with me and, just asked me how I was so like I never felt alone and yeah I felt like really welcome since day one in the US so like they made it easier for me than yeah maybe other people will find it yeah and and so it was a scholarship so what line of study did you follow in Virginia so I did agricultural science so going off from my dad farming like I love that stuff, so I quite enjoy the career. And then I just did my master's in international business just because I finished really quickly my undergrad. Uh, so I still have like a year on something of scholarship to go and they just offered to pay for it. And I was like, well, might as well just do a master. <laughs> but it was, it was good. It was a really good experience. Yeah, and how was the hockey going at that point? Like how was the hockey set up? 
Uh, well, like the US just takes everything to the next level. Um, it was super professional in the way that they took everything so serious. We had at least five hours of training like every day and loads of um, loads of running, loads of lifting. Um, they put like specially emphasis in like being fit more than like being skillful and like playing like the best hockey. So um, it was it was tough. It was really tough, but it's yeah, it made us like really a really good team and really strong. So we got we got really really good results um, while I was there playing for for the US, yeah, for the for Liberty basically. So what, what happened after Liberty is the, I read about some sort of all American um, awards or what, how does that work and what did that mean to you to be sort of recognized at the young age? Yeah, so it was pretty good. I got like, yeah, two years in a row, the best awards that you could get in the US. And then my last year, I got like top scorer of the country and like um, play with the most points in the competition. That it's like something I like never, never really thought about. Like it's it's pretty big and because we were always underdogs, it was kind of like who is this kid like coming from like Liberty University? And then it was good because everybody just like starting like paying more attention to my school and like. Yeah, it was kind of like a tough game for everybody to come play at Liberty. So it meant a lot. It meant that like all the effort I put on was paying off. And um, yeah, it made me really happy. It was like three years of a lot of effort and it really paid off. So, so you're right so you're riding that way of, of sort of early recognition. Yeah, yeah your, your studies are going well, your hockey's going, going well. well. What were your aspirations after that in terms of like next level for your hockey? So I was looking into just moving into like a professional league. So as soon as I, in my last year in uni, I took like four months off. That was my summer break and then a bit of the spring. And I went over to Perth and played there. And I reckon Perth is one of the best leagues in the world because the whole Australian team is based there. So they are constantly playing on the league. So I went and playing that league and I was like, okay, like that exposed a couple of things that I had to work on and nothing. I just like wanted to keep playing internationally and like moving into like best league, better, better leagues. So that's what I kept doing. I play like two years in Perth and then played in Germany, like Bundesliga. That's one of the hardest leagues I ever played. And then... Yeah, play like National League in Australia and National League in New Zealand. And those like, those really were amazing leagues as well. Like that demonstrate that like everything I've worked on kind of like was going like the good way. But you also, um, you went back to Italy as well and you, you play some hockey with the national teams? In Australia. Ah, not Italy. Oh, okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Italy, because I got like double citizenship, um, they offered me to train and play with them basically. So last year while I was there in January, they came and do like a camp, like a month, a month training and stuff. So they invited me to join there and I was like, yeah, sure. And trained really well. And then they invited me to play the scratch match against Argentina, which is quite of like a intimidating situation. And did really well, so they asked me to like keep playing with them, and they like they counted me for like all the next competitions. We were supposed to play some this summer, but obviously it's not going to happen. And then, yeah, ho hopefully at the end of the of the year or something, something with the Italian team will happen. You mean the end of this year? Yes, yes, hopefully. Oh, okay, so yeah, if so you so if you had the chance, chance, would you rather represent Argentina or Italy in, in hockey? Um, I will go with Italy just because of the freedom they offer. So Argentina is a centralized program and they have to be all year round there. If not, they cannot be selected. Whereas with Italy, I can be here in Hong Kong and then whenever there's a tournament, they will just give me a call and I will show up to play a tournament. So I'd rather Italy just because of the freedom. But the level Argentina is higher. 
it's it's quite amazing what you crammed into five years of um of hockey outside of Argentina. It's amazing. Yeah. You mentioned you've been in thirty countries in your in your short time on earth. Not all but for holidays and traveling, it's uh, obviously a big motivator. Yes, yes, it has been honestly amazing, and that's why I just encourage a lot of people to just play hockey and get out there because there's so much opportunity to like travel the world and do like what I've done. Just it opens your head incredibly. Yeah, and um, you've got to be careful too because I've heard that some, some scooters uh, when you go over to you rent scooters. <laughs> You can fall off those quite easily. What happened? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we were traveling Thailand this year. I did like Vietnam for a week and then we we were riding scooters in Vietnam, so I was getting like super confident at them. And then we went to Thailand and we rented scooters again. And we were just riding, riding around, and my friend says, like, oh, my gosh, look at the Buddha. Let's go take a look. And I was like, okay, like, I definitely got this. And then we do a, t a U turn, like, in the middle of the road, like, a lot of traffic going on. And I completely slide off the road, and I was, like, legit bleeding my whole leg. And because I was a driver, like, I had to act cool, and I was like, oh, it's fine. Like, nothing really going on. My whole <laughs> leg, like, I still have, like, the whole scratch on it um, and she was like are you fine and I'm like yeah yeah fine fine I was like didn't really pay attention I was like I never get sick I never get anything infected like it's gonna <laughs> be fine and then this was like the first day we were at the island and then we went like snorkeling got in the ocean every day like I'd see I said it like I keep looking at it and it kept getting like worse and worse and I was like oh it's gonna be fine like no nothing to worry about and then the last night we went to like the full moon party and it was like full on, like, I don't know, terrible. And then I get back to the hotel and I look at my leg and it was like full of scent. Like my leg was like massive. And I was like, this is actually not good at all. We had like a fly that day. And then whenever we landed in Hong Kong, I called my dad and I was like, he's a doctor. And I call him and I'm like, Dad, I have something to show you. I'm not sure you're going to be happy about this, but like, I need your help. So I show him and he's like, he lost it. He's like, <laughs> you could lose your leg for this. Like, what's going through your head? Like, blah, blah. So yeah, I had to take like antibiotics and like couldn't move from my house for a week because like <laughs> every time I put my leg down, it will be like swelling and like disgusting. So don't ride scooters if you don't know how to. That's the lesson <laughs> learned. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool that your dad was able to give you a, a diagnosis um, halfway across the world and some, some, uh, some advice. Yes, I know, I know. That's like really lucky. Like through through we were like growing up, we never ever like saw a doctor because he was our doctor. So yeah. <laughs> And now he's probably just watching you a little bit closer these days um, where you're traveling and what you're doing. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, every time I send a photo, like my mom like inspects every aspect of it and she's like, what happened to your leg? Or like, what happened to this or this? Because they're scared, I'm not going to tell them like if something like that happens again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm curious, how did you end up in Hong Kong? I mean, with all these um, places you've been, with hockey, you... you I assume, I assume you came, came to Hong Kong, Kong for hockey, hockey but, but how did that how happen? Did that happen? So last year, like we were saying, last year was the year that I played like the most. I played like five tournaments, like back to back, and they were really high level. So I knew I wanted to come to Asia and play. I had like always my goal of playing in Japan. And I was just like looking through internet and I saw that one of the clubs here was looking for players. And I was like, okay, like I would just like give it a shot. So I like email a couple of clubs, Bali being one of them. And Lila, she called, she called me like, I don't know, two hours after. And she's like, we would love to have you on board. Like, this is what like the leaks looks like. Like she was saying like, don't expect the level to be like anywhere close to like what you have played before. Um, 
but I was just all about going for the experience and like I needed like a little bit of a break from like that high pressure. So nothing. I talked to her, I reckon, on a Monday and then that Friday I decided I was going to come in January and I was like all in and I love it. You do? Okay. So tell me, tell me what you love about it. I think like I came with the idea that it was going to be like Hong Kong, everybody like just thinks about a city and like super busy and crowded and stuff. And then I came here and you got so much to do. Like there's so much hiking, like there's so many like international cool people that just like invite you to do stuff all the time. There's like a massive, yeah, social life and hockey, like I'm, I'm being able to enjoy a lot the sport now than I was doing like these past years that I just like there I had to perform and that's it. Whereas here I just like I'm able to go and have a gig and like try new skills and mess it up and it's still all good. So I don't know, I I just love it here. And do you think, I mean, aside from your future hockey sort of uh, goals of, you know, maybe playing for Italy and all that, is Hong Kong a place you think you want to return to when you, when you can and um, see a future here past everything else? Um, yes. I, I think it's a great place to be, like, a couple of years at least. Uh, I would love to stick around the club and just try to make like the sport a bit more popular here because there's so much more room here for growth and and yeah and get the sport out there but I think um I was just talking with Lila I think I'll just stay here for a full other year and then just go from there like in the past years I've moved five or six times so it's just time to settle down a bit and see what I can do like yeah yeah and I suppose pre-season will be starting soon. Hopefully the facilities will start to open. We can start training as a team. And uh, when does the season kick off? They say this the first week of September. They're hoping that the season will start again. So, yeah, just working towards September, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard you've been doing some work for Ian Fleming. He must, uh, he must be a pushover to the boss. <laughs> Yes, yes, he's he's great. He has been giving me like a lot of work to do, which is awesome because it kept me busy during this time of like not having much to do. So it's really good. He told me a lot about his company and just give me a different experience that I like was not used to at all. So I'm really, really grateful. He's a great boss. Yeah, so you said the right thing there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> is, is there anything that you miss a lot about home, Argentina, that you know, sometimes you just want to get on a plane and go home? Definitely the steak. <laughs> nothing, nothing like the Argentinian steak. Yes, yes. And my family, hey? Like, I got, I got my cousin, she, he got, like, two little kids, hmm. and they're, like, obsessed, obsessed with me and my sister, so... It's tough every time we leave Argentina because they're like, when are you going to come? And I'm like, oh, not till next Christmas. And they're like, how many days till Christmas? And they're just like waiting and waiting for us to go back. So, yeah, just family and, yeah, friends. That's that's what we miss the, the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that, I think that wraps it up for this episode. Um, Maggie, it's been great talking to you and, and getting to know you a bit. Hopefully... The members and everyone else around the club get to know you a little bit more as well. We'll say hello when they see you and uh, look forward to seeing you on the plane in the Valley Colors um, for the season here. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.